this lecture, we are going to see three important things. Very first thing we are going to see is nothing but what are the different virtual warehouse sizes in Snowflake. Second thing we are going to see what are the different ways by using which we can create virtual warehouse. And third thing is nothing but actual demo on creation of the warehouse. So let's start. Virtual warehouse comes in t-shirt sizes such as extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, 2x large, 3x large, 4x large, 5 and 6x. If you are going to face the certification exam for Snowflake, then these virtual warehouse sizes are important to know. Each of these virtual house sizes comes with some credit. Here are the list of the credits per hour. If you are using extra small as a warehouse, then you are going to spend one credit for one hour and so on. For the small it is two credit, for medium it is four credit and large it is eight credit and so on. So if you notice here for the extra small it is one credit, for the small it is two credit, it is doubling from extra small to small, for small to medium it is again doubling from two to four. This credit per hours and virtual hours sizes are important because most of the time the questions get asked on this credit per hours for each warehouse size. Now let's go ahead and see some important aspect or some important notes about these virtual warehouses. Extra small warehouse is a default warehouse if you are going to create warehouse using command line. Extra large warehouse it is a default warehouse size if you are going to create warehouse using web interface. 5x large and 6x large only available with the Amazon Web Services cloud provider. It's important the, uh, these things may change in the future but these are the stats as of now. Now we can see in the screen itself there are two ways by using which we can create virtual warehouse. The first way is using command and the second is using web interface. In this lecture, we are going to see both of these ways to create the virtual warehouse. So let's go ahead and first create the warehouse using command. In order to create the virtual warehouse using command, we are going to log into this Snowflake account, which I have already logged in. Then we can go to the worksheet and under the worksheet, we'll see this uh, completely new worksheet is available. And in this worksheet, we are going to type a command. The command for creation of the warehouse it is the same as creating the table so let's go ahead and type the command create or replace if the virtual warehouse already present then it will get replaced with this new virtual warehouse then we need to provide the command that is the warehouse what we would like to create we are going to create a warehouse hence the command is warehouse and then we have to provide the name of warehouse so I'll just mention the virtual warehouse example underscore one. So this is my warehouse name. Now, if you do not provide any additional properties, then the default warehouse will be created as a extra small, which we just saw in our presentation. But I'm going to provide some additional properties for this warehouse. So in order to do, in order to provide those additional properties, we have to use the with command. After with we have to type those additional properties. Very first property will provide the warehouse size and the property name is warehouse size. Here we have to provide the size in single quotes. Then we'll provide the additional attributes such as auto suspend. We'll see what is the purpose of auto suspend shortly. Here I have provided auto suspend equal to 120. That means after 120 seconds, the virtual warehouse go into the suspended state. The next property is auto resume. I'll set the property as a true. That means when I execute a query, the suspended warehouse will automatically get into the resume state. And the next property is initial suspended status that is initially suspended initially suspended equal to true 
defines what will be the initial state of the warehouse. As we set the value equal to true, that means when we create this warehouse, its status will be suspended. Let's go ahead and execute this command. I have already used a semi-comma. This is a good practice to have. Select it and run it. It will give us a dialog box to verify your query and then click on run button. Here, warehouse vw underscore example one is successfully created. In order to verify that, you can go to the warehouse tab and you'll see a completely new warehouse got created with the status as a suspended. It's the size of extra small and cluster minimum and maximum is one and other properties such as auto suspend in two minutes. That is the 120 seconds we provided. Now we saw how to create the virtual warehouse using command line. Let's use the user interface. When we created a warehouse using the command line, default size is extra small. So let's see when we create the warehouse, what will be the default size. For that, I'll go ahead and click on this create new warehouse button. We can provide the warehouse name. We will provide the virtual warehouse name vw underscore example underscore two and here you can see the default size is extra large it will consume this 16 credits and that is as per our size description it's important because it will be helpful when you face the certification exam for snowflake i'll just select the small the maximum cluster let's create a default with the two and one will have the scaling policy standard and auto suspend you can change the value 5 minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes whatever you would like to let's keep the 5 minutes then you can provide the comment i'm providing the comment virtual house created using interface and click finish and our warehouse is created if you notice here, we did not provide the status, initial status here. So it is already in the status status. You can change the status by selecting the warehouse and make it suspended. Here, it will give us a dialog box saying that, are you sure you want to suspend this warehouse? I'll click yes. And this warehouse will go in the suspended state. In, in case you would like to resume it, you can select it and click on the resume. And it will say this will be the size of this warehouse. In case you would like to change, you can change it here also when you try to resume it and click finish. And again, the warehouse will start. So let me make it suspended. Now we'll see how to drop the warehouse. In order to drop the warehouse, you can select the particular warehouse, click on this drop. You can see the command also in case you would like to drop. It's a simple drop command, then warehouse and the warehouse name. It is similar to dropping the table. I'll just go ahead and click yes. The warehouse will be get dropped. In case you'd like to drop the warehouse using the command line, you can come here and you type the command. Drop warehouse. And I will drop this warehouse. and the warehouse is successfully dropped. In case you would like to verify, go to the warehouse and you will see there is no warehouse one present. This way, we can create the warehouse using two ways, using the command line or using the interface.